Criso friends, welcome back to Opus LNI, where we roll with the punches. This December marks the 50th anniversary of the formation of my partner's barony. Obviously, they planned a big to-do complete with fancy outfits for both him and the Baroness. Our friend made her dress out of the most luxurious figured gold fabric, and there was enough extra to line a matching Elizabethan half cape for my partner. And then he caught COVID the week of Thanksgiving. Really, it's been shocking that he's managed to avoid it for this long in a state that very pointedly does not care about public health measures. Fortunately, his case consisted mostly of lethargy, a cough, and a depressing loss of taste. Apparently, food is unappetizing when it only has texture. Unfortunately, he didn't test negative in time to attend the anniversary celebration, where I had planned to film the reveal footage. Honestly, this is not the first time this pandemic that I have made something lovely for him that he hasn't had the chance to wear at the intended event. It's just that this one was the biggest deal and the most devastating to miss. So instead of a reveal consisting of a very fancy partner looking elegant and refined, you get me running around the park like the gremlin I am. I expect we'll all manage. Everyone go grab your cuppa. Today I am drinking Harney and Sons Vanilla, my go-to daily drink. It's warm, comforting, goes with everything. If you enjoy hearing me talk about tea and are interested in seeing more of that from me, I'm currently doing a series of short form videos where I make a cup from my homemade Adventish tea calendar. You can find it on all of my platforms, including this one. Let's get into it. This is the gorgeous gold jacquard given to me by our seamstress friend. Isn't it lovely? It's a decent thickness, but is slippery as heck. This cape is going to be a three quarter circle. So the first thing I'll do is square up the fabric by using in the pattern repeat as a guide to cut a straight line and then tracing my arc. Then I'll repeat the process on the black silk taffeta, which I think will make the gold really pop. For the collar, I'm going with an all-in-one approach where the collar stand and fall are incorporated into one pattern piece. It's not as clean as a two-piece collar like we see on modern button-up shirts, but I'm okay with that. I want to add some couched gold work embroidery onto the black side of the collar to add a little detail that matches the gold lining. Since I want to be very precise, I'm marking a half inch seam allowance and then the stitching line another half inch in from that. To give the silk a little stability, as well as something for my hoop to grab onto, I'm pinning the collar to a spare piece of cotton muslin. I don't have an embroidery frame big enough to fit the whole collar on, yet. So I'm going to embroider half of it at a time. I'll start by putting the project into the frame such that there is an even tension. I want it to be as tight as a drum. Please admire my extremely professional stand system. I want the frame up off the table so I can work with the needle and thread from both top and bottom. Couched embroidery is unique in that you don't stitch through the material with the gold threads. In this case, I'm working with Japan Gold, which is a fiber core with either mylar or extremely thin flat gold wound around it. Instead, 
you use a very fine thread to stitch over the gold at short intervals, holding it into place on the surface of the fabric. I'm using a matching silk thread from Tide to History, but contrasting threads can also be used for additional visual interest. Once I have finished the first half, it's time to set up the frame for the second part. But this time, because I don't want to put the PVC clamp over the gold work I've already completed, I'm going to wind some spare flannel around one bar and pin the collar to it. That way it's held in place without damaging the existing embroidery. Next, it's time to construct the actual cape. I'll start by sewing the gold and black three-quarter circles together individually. Because the gold is so wiggly, I'm going to pin not only the front edges that will be sewn up, but also the length of each seam to keep things from slipping around. Then I'll pin the curves before sewing everything up.
Time to figure out the neckline, which means employing every fine art major's arch nemesis, math. I've measured the length of the raw edge of the collar, which is 20 inches, and I need to calculate the radius of a circle with a circumference of 26.7 inches, since this is a three-quarter circle cape. Then it's everyone's favorite algebraic equation, and ta-da, the radius is 4.25 inches, which is nice and easy to work with. After I've marked and cut the neckline, I'll turn the cape right side out through that hole and press everything nice and flat. The next step is pinning the collar to the cape. I wasn't sure initially whether I wanted to put the collar on such that it would match or contrast, since the cape is technically reversible. In the end, I decided to make them match, that way the gold work will pop even more. Once the collar is machine sewn on, I'll turn the edges of the black silk neckline under and slip stitch it closed. Well, friends, it turns out I did not account for gravity. While I did let the cape hang before sewing, since I have three quarter circles worth of bias to stretch out, it turns out that the gold fabric is both heavy and wiggly enough that just going from laying flat to hanging up causes the bias to temporarily stretch more, which means that I am going to have to unpick those areas, pin them up while hanging, and slip stitch them shut again. Luckily, I have one of my favorite tools, the curved scalpel. Don't let anyone tell you different, these things are magical. And who cares if you end up on a watch list somewhere for buying scalpel blades in bulk as a non-medical professional. I'll start by pinning about an inch and a half above the hem to make sure the fabric doesn't slip around even more. Then I will very carefully cut the hem open, just in the parts that are sagging. After that, I can cut away the excess, mark, turn, and pin the new hemline before spending the rest of the afternoon hand sewing.
Thank you to all of my current and continuing coffee members. Your support and the support of all my patrons makes it easier to do what I do and to provide quality content for everyone. Thank you so much. Stick around after this brief commercial break for a quick supply run and the finishing touches. We are off to the local craft store to pick up cording for ties. Okay, a while ago I found some twill tape like this that had some metallic threads woven into it and I was hoping that they would still have it but I don't see any. This one is pretty but the folds don't quite go and it still looks very modern. We're gonna keep looking. But I'm seeing now that they have some more cotton-like cording. Uh, and so if they have any in black, I may get this instead. I'm not extremely worried about period methods of finishing cord ends, especially for the end of the cord that will be inside the cape. I may add some metal aglets later, but the only ones I currently have are silver, so that will have to wait. I left a small opening at the collar to attach the ties, and once that is done, the cape is finished. Thank you for joining me in my late period shenanigans. I had way too much fun spinning myself dizzy in search of the perfect slow motion twirl. This is my last project video for 2022. I can't believe I've been doing this for over two years now. I'm having such a good time and I'm so glad you're coming along with me. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe, click on the bell if you feel like taking your chances with notifications, maybe share it on a social media platform. If you are interested in finding me on said social media, I am at Opus LNI everywhere, and all of those links will be in the description box, along with the link to my Ko-fi, where you can leave a one-time tip, browse my web shop for goods and patterns, or join my membership tiers for additional content and a personal thank you of your very own in my next video. Until next time, be kind, do the work, continue supporting marginalized people, and keep creating. Huel! Well,